just like that. the improvised one woman cabaret and please welcome on stage Trudy Carmichael <laughs> things everything from a to z this is a cabaret you're gonna see only once today and then never again baby that's las vegas Ooh, it's las vegas up in here babies and it's me trudy a round of applause for being here today! Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous! Hello, hello, hello everybody. Thank you so much for coming. It is I, Trudy Carmichael, Las Vegas diva extraordinaire. And as you know, you're here because you're all of my number one fans, yes? Yeah. Yes! Fabulous! And um, in case any of you have forgotten who I am or why you're my number one fan, it is because I am someone who makes up fabulous cabarets on the spot. Every single thing that I sing and say and breathe and dance is completely improvised. It's going to be happening here today and then never ever again. So each, each show is its own fabulous journey. And of course, where would I be without my fabulous accompanist, Trudy Thorne on the keys? Yes, he is making up every single song, every single note that he plays is improvised as well. No canned music here. Everything completely original. Right. Pretty impressive, right? You're impressive. Thank you. You're impressive. 
But you, you're right, I am impressive. Yes, so, oh look, I like the spotlight. I'm a little disco ball right now, look at that. Fabulous. So, as I said before, you all know that I tend to be a bit of a diva. Yes, a bit of a diva. But in a lovingly fabulous way. And the thing about me though, is that I am a very giving, caring, generous kind of diva. Because I don't just sing about myself and my own things or my own likes or wants. I also like to sing about the things that the people, the beautiful babies, you beautiful babies out there like. So, today I would love to start us off with some suggestions, some suggestions of perhaps um, song styles, song genres that you like. If anybody right now would just like to yell out a song style or genre or a female, preferably female singer that you favor, um, just right now, whatever's on the top of your head. Jazz. Jazz, fabulous. All right, I have lots of jazz that I like to do in my shows. Anything else, any other style? Blues. Blues, love it. I'm a bluesy kind of lady. And we'll get one more, any other style or song or singer? Beyonce. Beyonce, oh. Okay, now you shots fired. All right, now you're throwing, bringing the heat with Beyonce. I wish I had a fan so that I could Maybe, there, perfect, I was going to say you're all my fans, so that's perfect for COVID times. Um, just blow your part, yes, blow your particles on me. Uh, but yes, all my fans just blowing on me, I love it. Um, so oh, yes, okay, so Beyonce, fabulous. And let me also, also ask you this, is there anything that you encountered today or anything you've heard, overheard on the street or anything that's on your mind? That you would like? What was it? Garbage. You know, you're not the... Yesterday our suggestion was litter. It was a 100% UK audience, so litter, not garbage. Are you American? Yeah. There, I know, because Americans call it garbage. Just for, um, how, how, many, how many Americans do we have in the audience today? One? Oh, two? Okay, fabulous. All right, the rest of these babies, are you from UK? Yes. Wonderful, okay. Oh, Australia. Oh, Australia. Okay. John's from Australia as well. All right. Fabulous. I love it. Where's Australia from? Uh, Griffith, New South Wales. Griffiths. Ooh. Oh, is that right? You're very chill. No wonder you're very, very chill today. Fabulous. I love it. Yes. So, garbage. Um, <laughs> just a bit. And what else was it? Garbage, garbage marijuana. Okay, we can start the show off with that. We can get things started with a little garbage marijuana. You know, a little jazzy garbage marijuana. Ooh, oh, I don't wanna smoke just anything. I wanna get the very best strain. Give me some high quality. None of that garbage marijuana you're trying to sell off to me. No, I'm the kind of baby who needs a nice mellow high. Otherwise, I'll just get real jittery and I won't even know why. I can't handle all that. Paranoia from that kind of garbage marijuana. Oh, I'm willing to pay top dollar for a nice green plant that's gone. Give me just the perfect escape to float away to a cleaner street. Oh, please don't try to pass off that trash. That stuff that's all crumbled up and dry and smells like, you know what? Oh, I want something nice and clean. Don't try to give
we are. Yes, yes, yes. Do we, I mean, look, I'm not a cop. Are there any cops in the house? Any, or bobbies, or bobbies? Um, okay, good, I'm trusting everyone here. Because as I said, you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, babies. So if I, you know, anybody, um, do you, do you partake? I mean, since John identified you as the headquarters for marijuana, do you, do you partake? You're not a purveyor or a taker, a tote taker or any other uh, tote takers or anyone? No, we're all good babies. We are all straight edge, as I called it in high school. <laughs> Does anybody know that term, straight edge? That was for me growing up. We called it square. Square, yes, yes. So I was, um, I was a bit of a square growing up. I was, I was, you know, I wanted to be, I guess maybe because I was an only child and I um, was very close with my parents and I wanted to be an adult, but I never wanted to break any rules. No, no, as a little child I played like a tool, so they said I was never to be fooled by the kids who said, hey, Trudy, you want to give this a try? Ooh, oh, oh, as a little baby. I was so afraid of getting high. I saw those commercials. Don't do drugs, little babies, or else you may die. Oh, yes, in the 90s, they were very convincing to me. And so I lived the life of the straight and narrow Trudy. Even as I grew a little more and came of age, I always stayed away from things the color of sage green. And if somebody said, hey Trudy, why don't you try a drink? I just put my figurative apron on and I said, I don't. Do you think that's a good idea? I don't think. Oh, I was everybody's mama. I was always the responsible one. Yes, I was mother hen. I never said, let me just go wild. I was the responsible one. Child, I never ran wild. No, I was always mild. Oh, I was always the responsible only child. Yes, sort of a no, I tried not to be a narc though. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have fabulous, thank you, I have fabulous friends in, in elementary school and high school, or junior high as we called it, high school from, you know, age um, 14 to 17 or 18. What, what do you call your um, high school here? Is it? Academy. Academy. It's not so much nicer. We call it high school. I just had a revelation. Maybe that's why the children are getting high. They're going to high school. Oh my God. But except for me, because my friends, you know, they, they were a little more wild than I, and they always called me the designated driver, even though I couldn't drive until I was 22. <laughs> so they actually did have to drive me places. But um, I, I never wanted to try any drugs or anything. I was so afraid. I think that I just wanted to be the obedient one. I was always a little neurotic, more neurotic than the rest of my friend group. And so 
I stuck to the rules, I never colored outside the lines. Oh, and if I did, I was not very kind. I would get so mad, I would say, why did you make me do that? Oh, do we have any little babies who colored inside the lines? Or did you run wild? You did, you ran wild. You took chances. Where are my rebels out here? The babies in Academy who said, who cares? Oh, I mean, were you smoking in the boys' room? Anyone, were, were any of you doing that? Smoking in the girls' or boys' room? Yes. Yes, I know, Sharon, I know. Look, I can tell from a hundred miles away. Look, I, like I said, I promise I won't tell on you. Whatever happens here stays in here. Whatever you tell me, I am gonna just put in a box and throw away the key. It's okay, you can all unburden yourselves to me because I am quiet, I am silent as the grave. You believe me, right? Yes, okay, fabulous. So I want to know because I never experienced wildlife as a teenager. I, I didn't get into things until I guess my 20s really. So I was a bit of a late bloomer, but who here was, you know, a bit of a wild child? This is the meat there. Wild child? Okay. All right, fabulous. What kinds of things did you do that were kind of wild? <gasps> did you sneak in through the window? Quiet. Yeah, did you ever get caught? Oh, <gasps> you were, you were clever. All right. Yes, you didn't want to get caught. You were how old? Only 13 when you were sneaking out? <gasps> Where did you go when you snuck out of the house? Bright lights, Bright lights big city. You went into, into Soho? Did you go to the bars? They, I mean, the drinking age is, what is it, 18? You looked older, so you passed for 18 at 13? Oh my God. Would you like, you know, put on a, an outfit that made you look grown and put on a lot of makeup? You just had this, Yes, the red lipstick, it does it, yes. <gasps> and a bit of like teasing up the hair. Were you just looking like me, basically? <laughs> Pretty much. 13-year-old Trudy. 13-year-old Trudy going to Soho bars at 13. Oh, I love it. I just want to take myself back to that time when I was 13, just like you. And I was running wild. I would go put on something real grown up and some makeup to make myself look 18 and also a cigarette a little was a little prop cigarette would, were you really smoking it or you just had it as a prop oh okay so you're being responsible with your lungs okay were you with other friends or were you by yourself oh, by yourself Oh my God, you are an independent woman at 13 years old. Oh, to be that independent and free at the tender age of 13. Sneaking out of the house when everyone's fast asleep. Climbing down, I'm picturing you climbing down a tree and head in a cab saying hey take me to soho that's where i gotta go that's where i gotta be let me go into the clubs i know my way around here and i got my little prop to make me extra sophisticated a little fake cigarette just to add to this appearance 
Oh, and do people buy you drinks? No? Okay, good. So they knew better. They didn't want to get arrested, probably. You stayed in the corner, just observing, watching, observing the adults, drinking and smoking for real. How did that inform you as an adult? Do you have nothing changed? <laughs> Did you have an appreciation when you finally were old enough to join them for real? You had done, you had been there, done that. Okay, so you were like, whatever. Did you have any other friends who have been totally repressed like me? <laughs> no. Okay, not like me. No, not like, not like your little white as the driven snow, Trudy. No. <laughs> We're all the same. All the same. Right. Into different things. Oh, like what were those other things? Little parties. Did they have house parties? House parties are always fun because you feel a little safer, like <laughs> you can be a little more free with yourself. But worse? Oh God, I really need to go party with you. I mean, are you sure you're done? Are you sure you're partying, 13-year-old partying days are behind you? Because I gotta go, I gotta go with you. We're all going. After the show, we're all gonna hire a bus and we're gonna hop on and we're gonna go to Soho. It's a bit of a drive, but hey, that's fine. I'll go to Soho. And hang out with all of you party animals. All of you party animals. Yes, cause I, as you know, I was on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Oh, I didn't dare. Let me just come over here for a moment to my party animals over here. Was anybody over here sneaking out of the house as well? I mean, you can admit it. Yes! You! Sneaking out of the house. And how old were you when you snuck out of the house? Eleven! Where's everybody's parents? Let me just ask you a question. Where and where did you grow up? Birmingham. Eleven. See, that's the thing. Everybody in the UK and Australia and basically everywhere other than the United States, sorry, but uh, seems so much more sophisticated. And this is now I know why. Because you're sneaking out of the house in your pre-teens or barely teens. Oh my God, 11. Did you have friends that you would sneak out with? Oh, was it a whole crew of 11 year olds? How, who was the ringleader? You have been discovered, but I swear, it's uh, like I said, lock and key, throwing it away. Nothing will leave this room today. We have the windows open, so maybe somebody's gonna hear over here, but they don't know, they don't see you, they can't identify you. But, oh my God, you were the ringleader. The one who was like the Pied Piper of Birmingham, singing, doo -doo 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 corner when the street lights go out and we will take ourselves where did you go to a local nightclub was the bouncer blind by the way I look over to you look over to I need to see pictures. Please send me some pictures. That sounds like the most fabulous outfit that I would totally wear. Even now, even though I'm well past 11 years old, 
so liberated it's fun to take a little walk down memory lane as well isn't it to those times and and do you babies who has who has their own babies now okay fabulous so how <laughs> how do you know if your babies are sneaking out of the house that, <laughs> they are <laughs> yeah I mean you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree okay have you ever caught your babies because you're wise to it you know Okay, they know better. Oh, okay, well that's good. So you've shared, have you shared your experiences growing up? Okay, yes. Right, yes. I mean, it is a, di you know, it's a different world now. Times are changing, but, oh my God. And so, and what about your babies? Are, have they snuck out of the house as well? Your eldest one did. Did you ever catch them at it? And did you ground them or did you say, I mean, I'm closing the door now, you do you. You just go. You grounded them! Oh! Double standards. Do they, but do they know what you used to do at 11? So they didn't throw that back in your face? Oh, okay, well that was kind of them. Oh my goodness. I gave my parents no trouble at all. I gave, I was, I was such a little angel. I guess I just, well, I'm an erotic little Jewish girl. Maybe that was part of it. My neuroses kept me, because I also had a very neurotic grandmother who would always say, oh, oh no, the world is a scary place. It's very scary out there And the moment you step out of the nest You, you never know You never know There are strangers who will snatch you up off the street They are all looking for you Specifically they're saying, Trudy, do you want some candy? Some man without a face with a white van. I mean, you know, these are the stories that we get in the States. There was always a man with a van who lured the children with candy instead of promises of the club at 11 years old. There was candy to be had Because children in the United States Love their sugar and candy And so this man would say Hey, hey little babies, come with me I've got all kinds of candy and ice cream More than you can ever eat Come inside and enjoy these treats And then they would go into that van With that unidentified man And they'd never be heard from ever again They'd never be heard from ever again Also, the other stories I was told was If somebody, a stranger, comes to you And they say, oh, your mama and dad are hurt they're hurt and they told me to get you and bring you with me so I can bring you to them. They said, and of course, as an only child, I would have played to my, my affections and my, my little worries and I would have gone with them. So you would go with that man who said, come with me, I'll take you to your mommy and daddy. And you'd get into that van and maybe he would or he wouldn't have candy And you'd be driving down the road Past everything unknown And the same thing would happen again You'd never be heard from ever again So the 
these are the stories that, these are the nightmarish stories that flooded my brain as an adolescent child, as a little baby. My grandmother in particular put the fear of being taken away into me. And so maybe that's why I stayed under lock and key. Little Trudy staying under lock and key. Oh, never, never trying to climb out that window because I just knew there was just a street lined with men in white vans waiting to take me away to some other place, some other day. So I stayed in bed and had to pull the covers over my head because I was so afraid of turning up somewhere dead if I didn't stay in my house. That is America. Oh, God bless America. And the crazy people running around America that made our parents tell us how unsafe it was out there. Oh, the red, white, and blue that makes you blue in the face for being so afraid of running away. Yes. So, I mean, you know, you share with me and I share with you what an absolute head case I was and continue to be to this very day. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm always wary of strangers. And, you know, I, I, I'm from, from Las Vegas, but I spend a lot of time on the streets, <laughs> on the streets of New York, in New York City. I made that sound like something else entirely. I spend my time on the streets of New York. Lady of the night. Definitely not. In the heart of town, can you hear a honk in every other part of town? Does garbage pour out of every door? Yes, just like in Edinburgh. It's on the streets where I live. Yes, thank you, John. That was fabulous. That was a nice little departure. Yes, indeed. Yes, it is. Any, yes, any other requests? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, it is, you know, look, it's a scary, frightening world out there, but we can't always live in fear, right? Am I right? Exactly. I mean, you know, I guess as a child, you do, most children, not me, but most children feel indestructible. You know, right? When you left your house, you didn't think anything would happen. Right, you were confident, you were like, I can take care of myself. I can take care of myself and my other 11-year-old friends. Because we are adults, but not really, but we feel like we can, nothing can harm us. No harm can come to us. We have just this magical protection over us. Because you never want to believe that any harm will come to you. Nothing's gonna harm us. Not while we go wrong, the streets of Soho and Birmingham. Nothing's gonna harm us, not while we are around. No, no. We are completely wise and true. Nothing. I wish that I had believed that more as a child because I might have been a little more adventurous and lived my life a little bit more. So I was a late bloomer, you know? I didn't feel comfortable taking some more chances until I became, I guess, a fully-fledged adult woman where, you know, I would go 
out to the bars and I would have some drinks. And I actually, my prom weekend, um, do you, is it prom here too? What do you call it when you go to like a... a Same strokes like Deb. A Deb? Like a Deb ball? Debutante ball? Okay. And how about... Oh, it's not really a thing? Oh, there's no... What are they? Graduation. So, but do you have dances during academy or anything when you're... Not when you were a kid. Okay, but you did? Okay, they had a... Oh, okay. But it was after high school. We had about... A, we had a dance just every year from, you know, our, our sophomores to our second year, third and fourth year of high school. Yeah, okay. A disco. Oh, disco. Oh, disco. Okay. A school disco. Okay, we had something our sophomore, our, our you know, year 10, uh, that was called a soft hop. Um, adorable. Um, and then we had jun you know, junior and senior prom was our third and fourth year of high school. And um, so uh, finally, I did go to those dances. I mean, I, I did go out with my, I had friends. I promise I had friends. They liked me. I was a pain in the ass half the time, but they liked me. They, I think, liked, you know, having a, an excuse to make fun of somebody <laughs> or just to give me a hard time. But I think they appreciated my love and care that I wanted to make sure everyone was safe and would get home safe and everything. But um, but my my final year of high school, we had our senior prom and we rented a house in the Jersey Shore, Cape May, which was a, you know, Victorian homes, a very posh kind of area of the Jersey Shore. It's, it's I don't know if anybody knows New Jersey, but we make fun of it. It's the armpit of America. Um, but they actually do have a nice shore, and we got a Victoria. The Garden State, which is the Garden State right? But but people who live there and around it make fun of it because yeah. But it actually there are beautiful places in New Jersey. But um, we rented a Victorian home for about ten of us, and that's where that's where Trudy finally had her very first experience with Mary Jane. I'm looking at you because. <laughs> I just keep thinking that you're, you know, you grow a lot of Mary Jane in your backyard. It's all John's fault. I'm so sorry, but, <laughs> but um, that's where I had my very first experience. Oh, first it started with some alcohol, which is a gateway to marijuana, apparently. At least for me, it was the perfect gateway. Yes, I don't know what it was. I think it was just all about that weekend when Trudy would finally have her debutante. Her coming out of her shell and from being a square, she was tired of being a square. She had so many cares, she finally wanted to make a plan to have fun. Just let it run and go a little bit crazy. She was tired of being a buttoned up nun, a little Jewish nun. Oh, she was determined to finally have fun. Really have fun. Oh, so my best friend Lisa, she made lemon drop shots, which was basically lemon with vodka and sugar because children in America love their sugar. Oh, a little spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Just a little spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. <laughs> and after a few of those lemon drop shots, I was feeling pretty loose. I was feeling pretty hot. I said, hey, my friends, what else? 
do you got? What else do you got? And I was falling, yes, I was falling down the well. Little Alice through the looking glass, falling down the well in two. Where I could finally experience the darker side of things, the crazier side of life. And I said, do you got a, do you got a, any marijuana? Do you got a, any kind of hash or Mary Jane for me? I'm ready to graduate. I'm ready to take my faithful plunge into that new realm of living. And so we all sat around on somebody's bed. It was somebody's bed if I remember correct. Does that sound familiar to you as well? Yes, sitting on somebody's bed. And my friend Eddie, he sparked a joint. The very first one I had ever seen. And they passed it around and it finally came to little baby Trudy. And I looked at it and I said, Trudy, oh my God, this is finally the time. This is finally your moment to give this thing a try. I hope that if I try it, that I won't die like all those commercials said. So I held it up to my lips and pressed it and took a drag. And they said, hold it, Trudy, hold it. You have to hold it in or it doesn't count and you won't feel anything. <laughs> and I held my breath. And I felt myself get lightheaded. And they said, you have to, okay, now breathe it out because you're going to pass out if you don't breathe. Remember to breathe. <sighs> Just like everybody blowing on me, like Beyonce. Blowing. Oh, I blew it out, blew out the smoke. And I... absolutely nothing. I thought I would feel something, but I felt nothing my very first time. And I said, let me hit it again, because I felt nothing. I felt nothing. It wasn't that big of a deal after all. But they said, well, actually, Trudy, that's totally not for your first time, you probably won't feel anything for quite a while. So I said, oh, well that's kind of disappointing. What's the point? But then, they didn't leave me hanging. No, later on that night, when I couldn't go to bed, I went downstairs and I encountered a couple of other friends and they had something that I had also never seen before. It was long and pipe-like and I said, oh sure, it was a bong, it was a bong, a water pipe. And I said, well, should I try that since the first time didn't take? Right, exactly. And so I took it all in. And I held my breath.
that in healing it was totally worthless. Oh, I fell. Wait a minute. Have you all been here this whole time? Hang on. I, I'm starting to feel a little bit of a tingle. A little bit of an airiness. Oh, does anybody have any chips? Any chips over here? I suddenly feel a little my bit, wee bit peckish. Oh my God. I think, I think I finally did it, everyone. I finally feel. me on that journey of, of feeling something because I finally did and you know it was it was really fun actually actually I had a, a good time I felt like I really had graduated to the next taken the next step into adulthood you know because I was I was not quite 18 yet um, so, but, and so we were all, by the way, we were all drinking illegally because the drinking age in the States is 21. So I had already crossed over into breaking the law, breaking the law at 17. And I just, I did, I, I felt like that was such an awakening, that time in my life, that weekend. I have such, even though I, I did spend, I ended up spending a significant amount of it either intoxicated or high on marijuana. Um, I still remember a good part of it. And that's, you know, that was, it is, you know, I just, there was something about the camaraderie, that final weekend with your best friends, when, you know, you don't know if anything is going to ever be like that ever again. Do you all know what I mean? No, not at all. <laughs> you know what I, I mean, it's, it's just, you realize that you've been through school together for so many years, and you come to love these people and care for them, and, I mean, especially me, I cared for them like I was their mama. Because I was such the responsible one. And I, I wanted to, you know, soak it all in. Soak in these, this time, this weekend that I had with these friends that, you know, who knows? We're all going our separate ways to university. And we, we may not ever be able to experience this moment with each other ever again. And it was bittersweet. <coughs> bittersweet times. So, I try to soak it all in every single moment of that weekend with every one of my best friends, my closest and most trusted friends. Finally, I gave up control. I let somebody else take the wheel. I said, this is finally the moment when I can be that stupid kid, when I can just let it all go. Let it all be whatever will happen. Let it all go. Not be so afraid of the future and we had the mostest fun every single one of us hanging out and drinking shots and yes more smoking that bomb but the most spectacular thing I remember about that precious time is that it was the perfect weekend of friendship for all of us and also by the way the marijuana wasn't garbage after all it wasn't garbage, marijuana, no, 
It was a super smooth and happy little high. The end of high school was finally punctuated by the perfect high. Even though I had to try repeatedly to get there, I finally did. All thanks to marijuana that wasn't garbage. Thank you for not being trash. Yes! Oh, beautiful babies. Thank you all so much for spending this time with me going down so many different memory lanes and for trusting me with your deepest, darkest secrets. As I said, what happened? What was that? Oh, I know, 11, 11. I am, I'm, I swear, I'm taking it to the grave with me, everybody. It will come with me to the grave. And again, thank you so much for coming and spending time with me today. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed today's show, please tell all your friends all your 11 year old you know, uh, friends, your 13 year old self, um, tell them all to come and join us. We only have, is it five more shows left? Five more shows left. Five more shows left in the festival. I can hardly believe it. I can't believe it. And um, so, but word of mouth, you know, we're trying to pack the houses for our final five shows. So please tell your friends, your enemies, your lovers, your families, your pot dealers, whoever you got whoever it is that you know. And also, if you would like to leave us a review at the bottom of our um, Ed Fringe performer page, Trudy Carmichael, dot, uh, Trudy Carmichael presents the improvised one-woman show on edfringe.com. Um, audience reviews are welcome. I only take raves, however. So if it's not a rave, just send an email to yourself to get it out of your system. Um, but thank you so much, and give a big round of applause for our fabulous job going on the keys! Thank you so much, and to our beautiful baby on lights in the back, thank you so much! And I'm Trudy Carmichael, I always will be! Good night! Thank you! Thank you.